Hey everybody, I'm Jeremy Dibler, and welcome to Meredith's. For the past 10 years, Jennifer and me have spent almost every day at this little bakery, getting to meet some really interesting people, having coffee and donuts, and talking about God and life and all kinds of stuff in between. Two years ago, I began blogging from Meredith's, and this year I decided to turn that blog into a video show so you could get to meet some of those interesting people and so that I could stop talking about myself for a while. So enjoy. This is Meredith's Monday. Hey, everybody. I am psyched to have Mia Fields with me this morning. Um, you may not know her, uh, but you know her songs. And um, some of the reason for FFH's whatever reemergence in the Christian music scene is because of Mia's help. Um, I was sitting with Jason Ingram, who I had on a couple of weeks ago, and um, I was trying to finish up songs for a record, and uh, he said, you know Mia Fields? And I said, no. And he said, you should meet her. She's a great songwriter. Um, and so the two songs that you probably have heard of FFH over the past year or so, Undone and What If You Rest, were co-written by Mia. Yeah. <laughs> I wrote the best parts of them. Yeah, um, pretty and Mia much. just sort of filled I mean, in. I just tweaked it, you know. Did. Yeah. So you live here now, full time. I am living here. I've got like a three year visa, and so I'm just, you know. So what happens after three years? I don't know. I don't yeah. know. God is just gonna, I guess, do whatever he wants to do. Okay. So, um, born and raised in Australia. Yep. Where? Born and raised in a little tiny town um, called Myrtleford. Okay. And it has three thousand six hundred people. Near Sydney. Um, it's actually about eight hours away from Sydney. Okay. And then when I was 17, I moved to Sydney. So not near any of the flood? No, but my parents now live in Queensland, which is oh kind of near gosh. the floods are, but they were fine. They were? Totally but fine. So many people weren't, oh my gosh. I know. Do they know people who lost their house? And um, I think everybody kind of knows somebody because Brisbane's a pretty big city. It's yeah. one of the major cities, but- It's like got, destroyed. Yeah. Oh, yeah, but Aussie's like a kind of like, you know, we, we have like a term called Aussie battler, you know, and they just kind of keep pressing on, so. I think like people are just kind of like dealt with it and like move forward. Yeah, you know all of my Australian friends, <laughs> I, they all have that one thing in common. Yeah, like you call like, it the lack of filter. Just yeah, just like keep pushing on, keep doing your yeah. thing. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so you have a lot of things going for you. You're Australian, and so you've got this great accent. Get out, mate. Great songwriter. From now, now, okay, were you, were you the sort of the principal? Um, of the Hillsong Songwriting Academy, or are you just involved in it? Well, it's not, um, it's really like a worship school, like, okay. and I just kind of oversaw the songwriting okay. course, you know, okay. um, which was great. I love, like, it's so great, like, yeah. being able to, like, teach people, like, some of the things that you've learned along your journey and maybe save people from, like, some of the, like, time that you've mm. spent, you know? Mm -hmm. I kind of spent a lot of time, like, I guess, beating my head up against a brick wall trying to figure things out, so. If I can help people like avoid some of those things then yeah. and break it down, make it just real easy for people, then that's great. That's hard to leave, I bet. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Why well, did you? Well, I'd been at Hilson Church for 10 years and then about four years ago, I kind of started coming back and forward to Nashville and um, I was like involved in Hilson Church and like singing on the team and writing songs and um, and like loving it. Like, and then, but then as well, just started writing outside of church for like mm. other Christian artists as well. And it was kind of like loving both, but it ended up just being too expensive coming back and forward. And I was coming yeah. here like four or five times a year. Oh so, my gosh. I know. <laughs> that would be expensive. It was pretty expensive. All your royalties are going to the airline. Eaten up. Yeah. By Qantas. Um, but I mean, but I, I kind of think, you know, if you love something, you'll invest into it. Yeah. And I love, love, love songwriting. So, um, so I was doing that and then, you know, we just, I just talked to her out, like, you know, our ladyship and just said, you know, what do you think about like me going to Nashville for a season? And, um, and I, and they were like, yep, you know, like we totally understand like why, like why that would be a great thing for you. And like, we totally support you and they've just been great and like, like stayed in contact really well. And, you know, I still feel like part of the team. I went home in January and December and like, it was like nothing had changed. Everyone just treated me like I hadn't been gone. Now, what about, I mean, your family had to be bummed. You're you're a triplet. Yeah, I am a triplet. So identical. Um, yes, as, okay. as identical as identical as you can be. Okay, who's the oldest? Um, 
My sister Darina is the oldest, and okay. then my other sister Kaziah is middle, and then I'm the baby. Okay. And so, um, what did they say when you said I'm moving to America? Well, I, I mean, do you don't I mean, uh -huh. twins and triplets have this like bond. We do have this bond. I do talk to my sisters a lot. Um, like, but they'll ring me up during the day, like, and tell me like random things. Like, they'll ring me up and be like, "Guess what? I just had this for lunch," and I'll be like, "What?" Like, and then the important things they forget to tell me. Like the other day. Actually, the other day my sister got engaged, and um, and like the only the only day that I was not in America, I was in Canada. My phone wasn't working, and then the house I was staying at didn't have internet, so everyone found out my sister was engaged before oh I did. Gosh. It was so funny. Um, yeah. um, but anyways, no. Uh, so, are you performing anywhere? Like um, when you go to these churches, do you lead worship and perform? Yeah, and I like. Do you know what's funny is I like my journey as a singer has been a real funny one. I always thought that I couldn't sing that well. Yeah, and so. Um, so coming to Nashville has been like a real, like, I mean, I'm always happy to lead worship and I feel real confident leading worship, but like coming to Nashville, people are like, you know, you know, you should do like this or you should do that. And, and I'm like, I never thought of myself as like a singer, singer, you yeah. know, like just like, oh, I worship leader, but I don't sing, you know? Um, so it's actually been like a great thing being here and I've, I've felt more confident as like a vocalist. Um, so I don't know. Plus like, you have that, you have the Hillsong thing sort of attached to you. Yeah. And I mean, I know, like, the first time we talked, I kept asking you about Hillsong and Hillsongs and just, you know, wanting to know about it. And you were just like, look, man, it's just my church. It's just a church. Yeah. And, and, and it's the greatest church in the world. But, but it's, just it's just a church. A church. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's just yeah. a, a bunch of guys leading worship in yeah. the morning. I remember when Jason went over um, to Australia. I, were you there? Was yeah. Jason there? I mean, it was he, so great having Ingrams he, in Australia. He There's... came back and he's like, ma'am. It's pretty much just a church. Like they lead worship for twenty minutes, just like we do. And then yeah. they, I was like, "Really?" Because you think of it as something totally other than that. You yeah, know? you think it's going to be this big like show, and like, but it really is. I mean, it's like the albums like that you see on the DVDs. But yeah. at the end of the day, it's just like church, like, and it's like a stripped back version of that, you know. And everyone just like loves God and has the same kind of like, I don't know, the same goal. And that's just like that that our that our church would like, you know. I guess connect with God and, and like connect with people and hmm. and just you know I think Americans have I mean not just with Hillsong but I don't know if you've noticed this but Americans have this love for anything other whether it's I mean it's just your accent probably helps you make friends. oh my gosh seriously my it accent, probably does like my accent helps me get away with a lot yeah I'm sure it does Americans just are enamored by yeah, people with an accent, people from another country. I don't know what it is. And it, especially the Australian accent, you know, British accent, whatever. And, yeah. and, you know, the same thing happened to me when when we were living in South Africa. You know, people were just just enamored by the accent. Once they found yeah. out we were Americans, they just wanted to be around us. So yeah. it's much easier to make friends there than it was here. Um, but anyway, th thanks so much. No for worries. Coming. I appreciate it. No thanks worries. for getting up this early. No worries. I... You know what? Like my friend from Australia called this morning anyway, so it kind so of worked weird. out really well. What time is it there? Um, I think it's probably like you know, like ten thirty or eleven at night. Oh there. my gosh! So she's probably on the way home from. Actually, I think she was. She just had dinner with um, some of our friends, the Morgans, and then my other friend, um, a girl called Carrie Job, is over there at the moment at our, right, right. our color conference. Okay. So all my friends keep calling me every time they hang out with Carrie. They're like, "Oh, we're hanging out with Carrie. It makes us think of you." So I was like, and "You're like, it's look, nice. it's five thirty in the morning." I'm like, "It's five thirty in the morning, but I happen to be up." <laughs> I remember watching. I, I know we need to go, but I remember watching. Um, the time change at Y2. How old are you? Me, 28. <laughs> so you kind of remember y 2 Oh, I remember Y2K. Okay. Um, like the world was going to end. Yeah, and we watched the time change in Sydney and nothing happened. We were like, okay, we're we good. can go to bed. We're good, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this was like in the middle of the afternoon here. Sydney was fine. I think there was actually a guy, you know, getting money out of an ATM in Sydney when the time changed, and we were like, okay, okay. no big deal. Everyone's fine. The yeah. world hasn't ended. No. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks a lot. No worries. Appreciate it.